With all the catastrophes that the coronavirus epidemic brought us and the world, there were a couple of good things that came out of the whole catastrophe. And uh, one of the more important ones was the huge acceleration in the development of the mRNA technology in the world of medicine. Now, when you hear the word mRNA right now, you think of the first COVID vaccine to be developed and prepared for mass use. And it really put the whole mRNA technology on the map, the first COVID vaccine. But uh, funnily enough, the original intention behind the development of the mRNA technology uh, was not to to tackle the coronavirus. It dates way further back than when the coronavirus epidemic actually began. Now, with that said, uh, we thought it would be a good idea uh, for us to uh, come take a look at uh, Renop Therapeutics, which is at the forefront of developing the mRNA technology in the medicine, and uh, explore the science behind it, see the different applications, and in particular, uh, the, the applications that are intended for the original intentions behind the development of the mRNA technology in the first place, namely cancer. That's what we're exploring in this episode of your mind. There are different types of vaccines that we use based on the different type of diseases. For example, we have protein-based vaccines such as the hepatitis B vaccine or the flu vaccine. These are proteins that we inject into the body to help it become immunized to these diseases. And then there are the mRNA vaccines which instead of injecting the protein directly into the body, it tells the body through the mRNA how to make that protein itself. That's the basic difference between protein-based vaccines and mRNA vaccines. Now let's dig in a little bit deeper into how this mRNA technology and mRNA vaccines actually work. In the awe-inspiring microcosm of a cell, a remarkable process unfolds. It begins with DNA, life's blueprint, stored within the nucleus of the cell. The code of life, imprinted in the DNA, carries instructions for constructing proteins, the cell's workhorses. A section of DNA unravels, revealing its coded message. This process, known as transcription, triggers an intricate dance. An enzyme called RNA polymerase scans the DNA, creating a single-stranded copy called messenger RNA or mRNA. The mRNA carrying the DNA's instructions, embarks on a journey out of the nucleus into the bustling cell cytoplasm. Here, it meets the ribosome, a sophisticated molecular machine. Ribosomes, in a process known as translation, read the mRNA's code. This code, a unique sequence of nucleotides, is translated into a string of amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. Like a sentence formed from a precise arrangement of words, each protein is an exact sequence of amino acids, folded into a unique shape, ready to perform a specific job in the cell. This sequence of DNA to mRNA to protein is fundamental to life as we know it. A microscopic marvel happening trillions of times every second in our bodies. Next time you marvel at the wonders of life, remember, it all begins with a remarkable dance of molecular machines. The way that an mRNA vaccine works is that it tries to deliver a type of mRNA that we have uh, developed in a lab uh, to uh, the cells in the human body and use the, uh, the, the translators within the cell or the ribosomes uh, to create a type of a protein that we are after, a type of protein or an enzyme with a specific functionality that we're after. With the difference being that when this same process happens within the cell, the mRNAs are coming from within the nucleus of that cell, uh, and it's not necessarily giving us the type of proteins that we are after. So if we engineer a type of code or an mRNA in the lab, uh, it's kind of like an instruction manual, a recipe for the ribosomes within the cell to create for us the proteins and enzymes that we are after. And that's what we do with uh, a very common mRNA vaccine that is currently being used to protect people against uh, the coronavirus, the mRNA COVID vaccine. So I'm going to use this example to explain this whole process a little bit more in depth. In a COVID mRNA vaccine, 
We have the code to produce the spikes on the surface of the coronavirus, which you have seen in images of the virus all around. So we know what those spikes look like and how to make them. So we give this code, the mRNA that we have developed in the lab, to the cell, and the ribosomes are going to use that code and translate them into a type of protein, the proteins being the spikes you see on the coronavirus. Once these spikes are produced, the spikes will then attach themselves to the membrane of that same cell, and this is when the immune system starts to kick in, because it now recognizes that cell as a threat, even though the cell poses no threat. The immune system uses the white blood cells to create antibodies for the spikes, aka antigens. The antibodies attach themselves to the antigens and render them useless, making them unable to attach to any healthy cell. After the cell or the fake virus is covered in antibodies, scavengers of the immune system look for any virus with the antibodies on them and fully neutralize them. But because the cell is not a virus, it will not be neutralized by the scavengers so they can still carry on their functions. This is how mRNA vaccines work to protect us against COVID-19. But they're definitely not just uh, limited to be used in uh, COVID. There's a lot of other viral diseases uh, that can benefit from the mRNA technology and also especially cancer treatments and prevention. Uh, this was kind of the original idea behind the development of the mRNA uh, technology, but when, when COVID hits, the focus of most mRNA development uh, uh, science labs kind of shifted to develop the coronavirus. But uh, the original idea behind the mRNA technology was to prevent and uh, treat cancer. But there are a couple of uh, challenges that we face when we are uh, using uh, the mRNA vaccines. And the main one is that how do we actually deliver uh, these mRNAs into the cell? And to address that challenge and to explain to you more about it, uh, I will ask uh, Dr. Vahid Khoddami, the founder and CEO of Renault Therapeutics, to explain. There are two big challenges for the manufacturers to produce mRNA as a medicine. The first one is mass production of mRNA as the modified mRNA which has enough purity and when it enters the cell, the cells shouldn't consider it as a foreign substance. Because if it happens, the mRNAs which come from outside the cell and are not modified mRNAs will be recognized as an mRNA virus attack by the cell and will be destroyed. If they can, they will destroy mRNA and if they can't do that, thinking the whole cell is polluted, they will destroy the whole cell to avoid the leakage of pollution. This issue was solved using modified mRNA technology, which was a revolution for this part. It was also widely produced in order to produce vaccine and other products that are used to cure cancer or gene therapy. This was the first challenge. The second issue is how to deliver the produced mRNA to the cells that the cell receives it and releases it inside itself, and it gets transformed into protein by ribosomes. This was also a big challenge that was solved using lipid nanoparticle technology. While mRNA formulation in a special device which is installed for this purpose, the lipid nanoparticles surround the mRNA in a way to protect it, and when it is delivered to the cell, these lipid nanoparticles are disintegrated inside the cell and deliver the mRNA, and this mRNA can be used by the cell to produce protein. These proteins can be enzyme or a protein inside the cell, on the surface of the cell, or a secretory protein. In fact, with the prosperity of mRNA technology, various types of proteins which are required in our bodies can be produced with vaccination and medical usages. I used the coronavirus vaccine as the example of choice when I was explaining how the mRNA vaccine works from when it's injected into your body to when the mRNAs are absorbed by the cell and the uh, ribosomes use it to create proteins uh, that resemble the spike protein of a coronavirus to when the 
the body's immune system learns how to fight against a virus that is covered with that spike protein. Uh, but like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, this is only one of the applications of the mRNA technology and not even the original intention behind developing this technology in the first place. Uh, the current big thing in the world of mRNA and in the world of medicine in general really is uh, developing therapeutic methods using mRNA technology for cancer and that is one of the things that is uh, currently actually being used in some places it's in clinical phases in preclinical phases and some places it is actually being currently used as a therapeutic method and uh, here it is in the research and development phase uh, so we want to see how uh, the mRNA technology is going to be used to fight cancer and who better to explain it than the head of the research and development at Reno. There are two big challenges for the manufacturers to produce mRNA as a medicine. The first one is mass production of mRNA. As the modified mRNA which has enough purity and when it enters the cell, the cells shouldn't consider it as a foreign substance. Because if it happens, the mRNAs which come from outside the cell and are not modified mRNAs will be recognized as an mRNA virus attack by the cell and will be destroyed. If they can, they will destroy mRNA. And if they can't do that, thinking the whole cell is polluted, they will destroy the whole cell to avoid the leakage of pollution. This issue was solved using modified mRNA technology which was a revolution for this part. It was also widely produced in order to produce vaccine and other products that are used to cure cancer or gene therapy. This was the first challenge. The second issue is how to deliver the produced mRNA to the cells that the cell receives it and releases it inside itself and gets transformed into protein by ribosomes. This was also a big challenge that was solved using lipid nanoparticle technology. While mRNA formulation in a special device which is installed for this purpose, the lipid nanoparticles surrounded the mRNA in a way to protect it and when it is delivered to the cell, these lipid nanoparticles are disintegrated inside the cell and deliver the mRNA and this mRNA can be used by the cell to produce protein. These proteins can be enzyme or a protein inside the cell or the surface of the cell secretory protein. In fact, with the prosperity of mRNA technology, various types of proteins which are required in our bodies can be produced with vaccination and medical usages. In the ever-evolving war against cancer, scientists have harnessed a powerful ally from our body's own arsenal, cytokines. Cytokines, a diverse group of proteins, act as messengers in our immune system playing a pivotal role in cell signaling. Like conductors orchestrating a symphony, cytokines regulate the intensity and duration of the immune response. They can encourage the growth and activation of more immune cells, rallying the troops to target and destroy invasive cancer cells. Cytokine therapy, therefore, is like adding a potent maestro to the performance. Doctors can inject cytokines into the body to stimulate an immune response. A new dawn in cancer treatment is on the horizon. From using herbal medicine since the dawn of man to the penicillin revolution and the advent of chemical drugs to biodrugs and insulin, we've come a long way to get to where we are right now with the mRNA technology in the world of medicine. Uh, I mean, we're using it to treat cancer, so that should tell you about the revolution that it actually is. It is the next big thing. It is the current big thing in the world of medicine, and you're going to hear and see a lot more about it in the coming years in uh, cancer immunotherapy, gene therapy, and uh, various types of prophylactic vaccinations to uh, help us protect ourselves from various diseases. So uh, that's going to be it for uh, this episode of Iran Tech. I hope you've all learned something. I'll see you all next week.